all snakes are considered to be poisonous by people of our country. But this belief is not true. Out of the snake population found in India, only 33% are poisonous and remaining are non-poisonous. What are these poisonous snakes? Poisonous means if the bite of a snake harms the person, then it is considered to be poisonous. If the bite is not harmful and if it is not proving fatal to the mankind, then it is considered to be non-poisonous. And some of the important poisonous snakes we find are viper, cobra, crate, etc. Generally, in India itself, yearly we find nearly 7,000 to 14,000 deaths occur per annum. But all these deaths are due to sheer fear and shock and also unscientific way of treatment uh, like incantations, mantras and herbal treatments, etc. In case the snake is not poisonous, then such treatment is not necessary at all. Then how do we identify these poisonous snakes from that of the non-poisonous snake? In fact, that is the interest of our lesson today. In spite of this, uh, the bad reputation the snakes are having as uh, poisonous uh, creatures, still in Hindu religion, they enjoy a very high position or the divine place. Now let us see some of the very important points by which we can distinguish the poisonous snakes from that of the non-poisonous snakes. For a zoologist, this particular topic may be of academic interest, but for commoner it gives lot of knowledge and awareness. To differentiate poisonous from that of non-poisonous snake, we need to observe nine important characters. They are tail, head, cephalic scales, laurel pit, supralabials, infralabials, vertebrals, ventrals and caudals. If the tail is pointed or cylindrical, then the snake may be poisonous or non-poisonous. But if the tail is laterally compressed and over shaped, then it is poisonous examples enhedrina etc but there are few non poisonous snakes with laterally compressed tails they are tiflops and uh, arix johnny now in rattlesnake we can see the ring like structures on the tail region and it makes noise while moving now the next observation should be the head region shape of the head. If the head is oval like this with large shields, then it may be poisonous or non-poisonous. If the head is pear shaped or triangular in shape, then it is a poisonous snake, it is called as a viper. Then the next observation is the laurel pit. Laurel pit is a pit present in between the eye and the nasal region. Now, in case the pit is present connecting the eye and the nasal, then it is the pit viper. The next observation is the supra labial, that is the shield which is present on the upper lip. Out of the seven labials, if the third supra labial is large, connecting the eye and the nostril, then it is a poisonous snake, it can be a cobra or the coral snake. Now, if it is a cobra, then we can identify the cobra by seeing the cephalic head and also a spectacular mark on the hood. If it is not a cobra, then it must be a coral snake, in which case we will see the coral marks on the belly region. The next observation is the infralabials. If there are four infralabials and the fourth one is the largest, then again it is a poisonous snake and it is a crate. To confirm this, immediately you can observe the vertebrals. Vertebrals are the scales which are present on the dorsal region of the snake. If the vertebrals are hexagonal in shape, then it is a crate. Let us observe the 
ventrals. Ventrals are the scales which are present on the ventral region of the snake. Now, if the ventrals are small or broad, then it is poisonous or non poisonous. If the ventrals are small, it is non poisonous, and if they are little bit broad and in continuation with the lateral scales or the dorsal scales, then also it is non poisonous. But if the belly scales are large and they are continuous, then it may be poisonous or a non poisonous snake. If the caudals are undivided with a fourth infralabial largest, then it is a crate, and if the caudals are divided, then it is a russell viper. It is an example for non poisonous snake, its name is Erex johnny. It is commonly called as mouth double mouthed snake because its tail looks like as a mouth, hence, it is called as double mouthed snake. This uh, scales on the body are small as not imbricated, ventrals are broad, it grows about 1 meter in length. It is an wavy parasalmal. It is an example for another non poisonous snake. It, it is commonly called as grass snake or tree snake. It lives on trees. It is Naza Naza, a deadly poisonous snake. Head is not distinct from the neck. Neck contains cervical ribs, which, are, which helps in formation of hood. Head contains the tarsopra labial, which is the largest, which touches the eye and the nares. The belly contains of dorsal uh, small scales. And ventrally, it has a vertebral tail is pointed, contains of two rows of subcaudals. It is Tayas, commonly called as rat snake. It grows about two meters in length. The head covers covered by shells. Fourth and third labial, infra labials are large. Tail is pointed, round, and it's cylindrical. It contains two rows of subcaudals. Belly on ventral side consists of transverse plates. On dorsal side, it contains of smooth scales. Here is a python. Pythons are sluggish and non poisonous, but they can kill sheep, goats, dogs, tigers, and even man, sometimes simply by strangulations. They are commonly called as constrictor. Body is brown above and grey below. The dorsal surface bears rhomboidal patches with dark grey edges, while the ventral surface has yellow brown spots. Body is large, massive, and measures up to 29 feet in length and 250 pounds in weight. Head is distinct and covered with shields, while the remaining body has small scales. Now, pythons have worldwide distribution except New Zealand. Of course, there are no snakes found in New Zealand, and these pythons they are found in jungles and often climbs trees. They are carnivorous feeds on reptiles, birds and mammals. Commonly known as Russell's viper or pitless viper, it is a common poisonous snake of India, Burma, Siam and Ceylon. It is found in rocky and bushy regions, feeds on mice, rats, lizards and frogs. Russell's viper lives in rocky and bushy regions and usually remain coiled with the head in the center of coil. It produces loud and continuous hissing voice, which is different from cobra's in the sense that cobra's noise is intermittent and of short duration. It is viviparous. Its bite is deadly poisonous, causing local swelling, blood strain discharge from the wound, intense pain, cold, sweat, vomiting, and thready pulse. Venom is hemotoxic, bites man and large animals only in self defense. It may be as long as 5 feet. Dorsal surface is pale brown, while Ventral surface is yellowish white. Three rows of elliptical patches of dark brown or black color are present on the dorsal surface. Scales on the head small, keeled, and arranged in an imbricate fashion. 
dorsal scales on the trunk are keeled and belly is covered with belly plates which extend along the entire width of belly. Loreal pit between the nasal opening and eye is absent. Tail small and subcaudals are divided. This is commonly known as water snake. It lives in freshwater ponds, lakes and can be seen in paddy fields during rainy season. Remains hidden in the aquatic vegetation or in grass. Body is olive green with black spots arranged in chessboard manner. Head is covered with head shields. Scales on the back are killed. Belly plates are incomplete and subcaudals are divided. Eyes are round and surrounded by a white circle. Non poisonous snake. Cobra is the deadliest snake of Afro Asian countries. Widely distributed in India, China, Philippines. Tasmania, Africa and Australia etc. It prefers to live in deserted hills of termites, heaps of stones and stacks of wood. It is commonly known as Nag or Cobra. It may attain the length of 2-3 meters. Body is brown or dark blackish, but after winter hibernation it appears golden yellow. Head very small and indistinct from the neck covered with shields. Third supralabial scale touches the eye and the scale bearing nostril. Neck region is dilatable and the expanded part is known as hood. Hood has bands on the under surface and a binocellate mark on the dorsal surface. Belly plates entire and external all along the width. Tail cylindrical and subcaudals subdivided or paid, and the venom is neurotoxic. It is oviparous. And the common Indian cobra is Nasa Nasa, which is commonly known as Nag and is worshipped on Nagapanchami. In different forms of cobra, three different types of marks are seen on its hood. Number one, Binocellate forms with spectacular mark or binocellate mark on the hood found in Maharashtra. Monocellate forms with oval mark found in Bengal and Assam. Barred forms with oval mark incomplete on the lower side it is found in Punjab. Now, let us see the poisonous apparatus present in the poisonous snakes. There are two poisonous glands present in the poisonous snake on the upper jaw on either side of the jaw below the eyes. Now, these poisonous apparatus they consist of poisonous gland and a duct and fangs. Now, the poison is secreted in the poisonous gland and the fangs there is a groove present in this fang and the poison is passed to the fang through this duct. Let us see the biting mechanism. The skull of a poisonous snake is unique and specialized. All the skull bones such as palatine, maxilla, squamosal, quadrate they are all movable bones. In the biting three pairs of muscles help in the biting. They are digastric muscles, and spinopterygoid muscles and anterior temporalis muscles. Now, when the snake is striking a person, then immediately the contraction of digastric muscles takes place. With the contraction of this muscle, then the lower jaw will be raised up. With this, the quadrate which is levered with the lower jaw will be rotated. In turn, the pterygoid, ectopterygoid bars, palate and pterygoid bars, which are attached on one side to the quadrate bone and on the other side to the maxilla, will be pushed forward. With the result, th this actually happens with the help of the spinopterygoid muscle. Now, when the quadrate pushes the palate and pterygoid bar, then this in turn will be 
rotating the maxillary bone. This maxilla when it rotates it thrusts the fangs erect and then the fangs will be ready to pierce into the victim. Now, once the fangs are pierced inside the victim then the poison will be secreted. Immediately this is followed by the contraction of anterior temporalis muscle. With the contraction of anterior temporalis muscle the mouth of a snake will be closed. This is how the mechanism of biting takes place in the poisonous snakes. Two types of uh, toxins are generally seen in the snake's venom neurotoxic and hemotoxic. The neurotoxic example is the cobra's venom and hemotoxic is the viper's venom. In case of neurotoxic it provokes muscular paralysis as the act on motor nerves and in case of the uh, hemotoxic then it causes hemorrhages and destroys the blood cells. Now, in either case that means in both the neurotoxic and also hemotoxic patients both they experience the respiratory difficulties and sometimes it is followed by the convulsions uh, with the vomitings associated with vomitings. Today we have with us Dr. K. Narsimlu who is working as assistant professor in Gandhi hospital and his area of research includes the effect of poisonous snake bites and treatment outcomes. Dr. Narsimlu, how many snake bite cases generally you register every day here? Yearly we will admit 3000 cases, general cases in our hospital. In that 300 cases are snake bites. If the snake bites are more seasonal, commonly in the rainy season. Sometimes a patient or a child may not be in a position to tell you that he is bitten by a snake. In such case, how do you confirm that it is a snake bite case? Yes. Really, we will receive the snake bites with fang marks. We will search for the fang marks. In a situation, we will not able to fang, identify the fang marks. We will search for that. Usually, soles, buttock, scalp areas, is any bitten, we will not identify the fang marks. But we will proceed for the case with uh, suggestive of clinical importance. They may be neurological, hematological or paralytic. Uh -huh. Then you mentioned the uh, fang marks doctor. Yes. Then will there be any difference between a fang marks of a poisonous snake and that of a non-poisonous snake? It's really true. The poisonous fang marks are deep. Sometimes suppose the viper bite, say there is a bleeding tendency around the fang marks. Suppose in uh, cobras there may be pain and paresthesia swelling around the fang marks. Will there be any other symptoms? Yes, non poisonous snakes fang marks are multiple or sometimes uh, more than two. I see and uh, this venom, wha what exactly is the venom and which factor of the venom is poisonous doctor? So, venom is nothing but modified saliva, uh -huh. this is secreted by the salivary glands. So, in poisonous snake, any of their bite, it will be injected through uh, fangs and it will reach the blood and by lymphatic circulation and tissue penetration. How does so, this uh, venom affect? So, it is a venom is the foreign body to our body. Mm -hmm. So, it is a uh, like enzymes and proteins, some bacteria which has mm -hmm. grown in uh, mouth of the snake. I see. See, apart from uh, this venom being neurotoxic and uh, hemotoxic, is there any other effects are there on any other organs? It will involve the all organs. Suppose if it is the hematological, mm -hmm. it is a one of the disseminated intravascular coagulation. Mm -hmm. So, that is caused the damage to the end organs like brain, kidney, mm -hmm. liver, what else? Mm -hmm. All organs. I see. Then what is this antivenom? So, we are having nowadays we are having polyvalent antivenom, previously used monovalent, but mm -hmm. is only act on only single, this is stipulated. Suppose in the sea snake and sea snake only, I see. but nowadays we are having the polyvalent, mm -hmm. like this is, this is the snake antivin, it is a polyvalent, mm -hmm. it is the acts against cobra, krite and viper. Yes, uh, doctor, I think this uh, antivenom 
the antivenom which is extracted from one type of uh, poison of a snake will not act upon another type of poison. Is that true? Yes. I see. That's then why we are gone to them polyvalent. Oh. But we don't know no, what I type see. of snake was bitten. I see. Yeah. Uh, that's so why if we a patient the, comes without even the knowledge. Even suppose if a cobra bite, we are giving the viper. Ven anti viper venom, anti uh, krait venom also. I see. This is a mixed one. That's so why we call it the polyvalent. Be, oh, huh. And uh, um, what I heard is this venom which is uh, taken orally is not poisonous. Is that true? Yes, exactly. It is a nothing but it is a protein material. Suppose if you are ingested by means taken by or mouth, mm -hmm. it will not cause. But until there is a mucosal ulcers or any discontinuation of the skin like yeah. that. That so prominently you must in patient or person who is taking the orally does not mm -hmm. have any ulcers in the mouth. I see. As right so, the such blade. parts are not there. So, that is why we are not uh, mm -hmm. encouraging. Why means uh, all persons will have either small gum bleeds or mm -hmm. tongue ulcers I see. or buccal mucosal discontinuation. Mm -hmm. Some fellows will take uh, orally. Some villagers, some entertainers, some tribes in Nagaland, they used to take orally to give the kick. I see. Yeah. But it will not cause anything. Mm -hmm. One, until otherwise there is an ulcer in the stomach or any area discontinuation of the skin, then it will be affect. That means venom must reach to the blood. Mm -hmm. Then only it is then only it is a poisonous. Poisonous. Otherwise it is otherwise not. it is a just protein material. I see. Could you please explain to us how do you treat the patient of snake bites here? Okay. When the patient comes to the hospital, we will assess the severity of envenomation. Exactly what grade uh, patient is having at that point. Actually, there are four grades of envenomation. That means, depending upon the clinical signs and symptoms, we will divide the envenomation into four types. The severity can be divided into four types. Grade zero, sometimes the patient will see the snake, but there is no evidence of bite. Mm -hmm. Then it is grade zero. And grade one means there will be evidence of bite, but there won't be any fang marks. And sometimes fang marks may be present, but there won't be any other local signs. For example, there won't be any no pain or swelling okay. or something, and no other systemic signs. Then it is grade one. Right? And grade 2 means there will be some local system, si symptoms. For example, there may be pain and there may be little swelling and there won't be any systemic manifestation. That is of grade 2. Mm -hmm. And grade 3 is severe local manifestation. The I swelling see. will be more I and see. the pain will be a lot and then sometimes the wound may be oozing of blood. I see. But there won't be any systemic manifestation. So these symptoms will be restricted to that particular that spot. That particular area. Uh -huh. And if it is severe, that is grade three. In the grade four, we'll have both local as well as systemic. Okay. Systemic manifestation means involvement of the nervous tissue, or involvement of the cardiovascular system, or involvement of the gastrointestinal system. That is systemic manifestation. So if we have local and systemic manifestations, then it is called grade four. So, depending upon these grades, we will give anti snake venom. That is polyvalent anti venom, snake venom, as suggested by Dr. Narsimhulisar, as previously. Yeah. Yeah. So, for grade 0, we don't give any anti snake venom. Mm -hmm. For grade 1, we will give one vial of anti snake venom. Mm -hmm. For grade 2, we will give two to four vials of anti snake venom. And for grade 3, we can give up to five vials or more than five vials. For severe envenomation like grade 4, we may have to give 10 to 20 vials or more than that also. So the uh, amount of anti-snake venom, the dose, that depends upon the severity of the envenomation. So we don't give routinely for all patients because it is costly one thing. And second thing is it the dangerous anaphylactic reactions do occur with this anti-snake venom because it is hyperimmune anti hyperimmune globulin so uh, anaphylactic reactions do occur so for all the types of snakes poisonous snakes you yes. will be giving the same anti venom anti snake venom polyvalent anti snake polyvalent. venom okay because yeah. most of the times the patient himself or attendant they are not sure about the snake exactly they will know the snake yeah. but uh, 
They will not have the knowledge of They cannot identify, identify the snake. Yes. So better is the polyvalent anti-snake oh, venom. Safe. Uh, yeah. Even uh, then, even that also, when the signs appear, then only we will give anti-snake venom. Uh, Otherwise, just we will observe the patient uh, for 12 hours, uh -huh. at least 12 hours. Uh -huh. Then we can come to a conclusion whether it is a poisonous or non-poisonous clinically. Uh -huh. What do you see the clinical symptoms? Usually will there be the any arrest of uh, this respiratory? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Again, usually in the clinical yeah. symptoms, uh, there will be local and systemic. In the local, usually the fang marks will be present. Mm -hmm. and sometimes uh, they may ooze the blood and uh, the swelling will be there. And systemic means, again, if it is a cobra and crate, there will be a neurological symptoms like palatal and pharyngeal palsy, respiratory paralysis, like that. If it so is the a viper, symptoms also change according to the, according to the it's snake. neurotoxic or, or hemotoxic. hemotoxic or usually if it is a viper, usually the bleeding manifestations are more. Mm -hmm. If it is a sea snake, the muscles will get paralyzed. So That's it's right. a myotoxic. Mm -hmm. So the symptoms also mm -hmm. varies depending upon the snake. I see. First aid. Suggestions. First yeah. and foremost is the reassurance. I see. Right? We have to allay the fear, fear of death. Mm -hmm. Usually most of the deaths may occur because of the this anxiety also. Yeah, okay. So we have to release the anxiety. So first is foremost is the reassurance. Mm -hmm. And second thing is the immobilization of the limb. For yes, example, sir. any which is a bite is in the lower limbs. Mm -hmm. How to immobilize the limb mm -hmm. because to the spread of the venom will be arrested by I that. See. Mm -hmm. And uh, splints are, uh, you can apply tourniquet also. Oh, I see. Locally available like uh, uh, this uh, tag of the shoe or some cloth or some grass. Mm -hmm. How to apply a tourniquet. I see. Uh, preventive, that, measures. About, uh, preventive measures. Preventive measures. About see. that bite. Mm -hmm. So that the venom spread will be minimized. Okay. Arrested rather. Arrested. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, later this uh, sucking of the blood and spitting mm -hmm. out of it. Mm. So previously they used to do that, Old but now uh, we are not rather. encouraging that. I see. There is no much help out of that. Mm -hmm. right?